Hey everybody, welcome back to day two of my test review and getting to love the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. We left off yesterday with these two prints being completed. These were done in the Flash Print software. I think that's what it's called, Windows-based Flash Print software. I really like that filament, by the way. Um, I don't normally print things because they're pretty, but I just love the way that filament looks. May have to get another roll of that. So, today right off the bat, there's a couple of annoyances I want to deal with. First, every time I turn this thing on, my router assigns it a different IP address, which means that when I go in the slicer, which means I have to come here to look up what it is, I have to go back in the slicer and change it. So what I did is on the home screen, tap this button down here, which is printer info, and right here it will tell you what the IP address is. I, I'm, I'm tired of dealing with this. I've done it five times now. I'm sick of it. So what I did is see if I can get... Now I know why people print styluses for this. I came into settings and I came into here and I came to static IP and I got on my router and you guys, this is going to be different for everybody. I have a... Um, a TP-Link Deco mesh network system. So I went into its phone app. I looked this information up. I picked this address, which just happened to be the last one it assigned it. And I made it, I'm making it static so it doesn't change. That's my net mask. That's my gateway. That's the DNS server that's in it. I put that in there. And now I can turn the printer on and off. And that's not going to change anymore. Um, I also have a webcam floating around I want to play with. I want to get this Jom key, Jomji. I just do not know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry that they sent me to test when I didn't have a high-speed printer and I tested it. Now I have a high-speed printer. I'm going to test it again. This is their black high-speed PLA Plus, and um, I intend to print this. And don't they say a? I, I saw a max speed somewhere in here of like 500 millimeters per second, and I'm not doing that here. I think the highest this hits in its normal normal setting is 300. I'm not going to push it any faster than that. My next issue is I'd like to use Orca Slicer. Now, this is not going to be a deep dive into Orca Slicer because I don't know enough about it to do a deep dive in it. So this is how I have it set up. This is the part I'm going to print today. Well, I was printing that Jamgi um, Silk PLA. I printed this neat looking um, honeycomb desk organizer and it was so pretty my wife took it and I didn't like it being completely round so I found one that's half. It will fit back up against the wall which is what I want so I'm going to print that. When I loaded it into Orca Slicer it told me something about relative positioning Floating point math, error this, error that. I loaded it into both um, Prusa Slicer and Curate, and I got errors, but they were, you know, typical 3D print errors. You know, facets, disconnected, what the hell ever, um, voids, things like that. Both fixed it. When I loaded each of their models that were fixed back in here, it gave me the same error messages, so I'm ignoring it. So, but here's another thing. If I come here... You'll see it says, and I'm sorry, I should be doing a screen grab, but I'm just too lazy right now. Um, Flash Forge Adventure 5M.4 Nozzle. I'm going to hit the Wi-Fi button. You'll see Wi-Fi comes up here. There is the IP I put in. If I click Test, it tells me connection to Flash Forge works correctly. I say OK. I say OK to that. I come up to here and click Device. And it tells me 192.164.4.68 refuse to connect. Okay, so for now I'm just going to ignore that. I'm going to try and send this print to it. Now, funny thing is, when I loaded this into Cura with my regular Ender 3 GTEC A10M settings, it told me it was going to take seven, like seven hours and 20 minutes to print. Now, this is Cura. You can add half again onto that to Cura to get the correct number. So I figured about 10 and a half hours or so. When I loaded it into Prusa Slicer, it told me it was going to take 10 and a half hours to print. Here's one thing to note. If I click Slice Plate up there, it tells me that it is going to take 4 hours and 23 minutes to print at a 0.20 layer height. 
I never use point two zero. Ever since I watched Chep, and this was a couple of several years ago at least, he made a point two eight fast. And I've used that point two eight fast settings of his and every printer I've ever had, and I can't really see much of a difference between point two and point two eight. So four hours and twenty three minutes at point two oh. I'm going to change it to 0.28. I'm sure it's going to complain about that. It's already complained about it more than once, but I don't care. And I'm going to slice the plate again. And now it's telling me 3 hours and 19 minutes. I like 3 hours and 19 minutes. So, let's get that let's get that filament loaded in and I'm going to print this and then I'm going to start playing with the camera. Um, I'm hoping I can play with the camera while it's printing, but um, maybe I'll plug that in first. I do want to print the enclosure. I've already looked up and found the enclosure kit. I just don't understand how they can sell it for that. I can't buy a single 3x3 sheet of 3mm polycarbonate for what they're selling the entire kit for. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get that ordered because that is something I want to do. And I have some black, Pia, a black Pet G that I'm going to print the enclosure pieces out of but for now I'm going to get that in I'm going to find the camera and I don't know where I'm going to mount the camera because I need the enclosure printed first so let me get this filament in and find the camera okay this is a Logitech I think it's a C922 I don't see a model number on there it's been years ago I bought it but um let's plug it in and I'm supposed to just be able to plug it in and it's supposed to find it at least that's what I'm told. So, you got to figure out where the setting is. And honestly, I haven't even looked at it yet. Camera, all right there. Turn the camera on. Please wait. Oh, the lights on the camera came on. Um, video. Am I supposed to be able to look at it? So, what's it telling me here? Um, picture. Don't really want pictures. video okay i don't know what i'm doing here so let me get that app that's on my phone here's my phone right here there's an app on the phone or i'm guessing i ought to be able to look through it right it should show it to me let me find that app forget what it was called probably flash something or other uh flash there's flash something or other Adventure 5M, idle, not sure where to tell it that I want to see out of the camera. What's this button do? That's the printer info button, 27C, don't know what these buttons do. That's a fan button. So is that the camera button there? Should I see the camera out of there? Oh, look at that. Okay, I can see the camera. Okay, so that works. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm digging that. I'm going to leave that plugged in. I'm not going to try and do anything special or fancy with it at the moment. Let's go over to Orca Slicer and let's send that print. Upload the print. All right. Says it completed. Our printer is saying it's downloading it. There it is. I didn't change any of the... I'm going to have to look. To, I think they wanted this printed at about 220. And I didn't think to change that. So let's see what it's going to do. What's the worst thing it can do? Fail and we learn something, right? I'm just going to go ahead and set the camera there. Didn't this thing have one more th part that folded out? Yeah, there it is there. Got a little hooky thing at the bottom. So, and that's about as much as I can tip it down. Let's see how, I mean, what's the worst it can do? Knock it off of there? Oh, yeah, it can. It can knock it off of there. Okay. <laughs> I think once it's printing, that'll be okay. But I think it's going to have to be mounted slightly different in the long run. All right. Let's see what that looks like on the phone. That's a pretty decent camera, if I remember correctly. 
course, I'm all I'm getting now is the spinning wheel of death. Oh, there it goes. All right. I mean, that's not horrible. A little bit of positioning, and that might actually be pretty decent. I think it's a little too close. I think if it were mounted up about like that, let me see, it's very slow to, um, there we go, very slow to respond. Hard to aim it at it, it's so slow. Looks like it, it looks like it's lagging about three to five seconds behind. Yeah, if you get that mounted right, that'd be, that'd be actually really useful. Still trying to figure out how I'm going to get lights on this. Know where this little clamp light goes really works out too well. So I've mounted my camera light on here on the side of the um, tripod for it. And that seems to be about the best so far. I'll try coming up above it too. I think this stand is long enough. Let's try it. Not long enough to get way up above it. Of course, it's not going to be zoomed in because this is just an action camera, not a, a real, I don't want to say a real camera. I don't want to insult those of you out here who use these. I'm not sure which one of those is best. I could try getting this. I just haven't figured out if there's a place on the printer that I can clamp this without getting in the way of something. And um, I think I'm going to have to print something for that to work. How about right there, down on the very bottom? That doesn't seem too bad. Let's try that. How much is that in the way of the camera? Well, I don't know. Did that really give it, do anything for us? Well, I guess it did. Anyway, that's supposed to be three hours and some odd amount of minutes to print. I'm going to go dink around with this Orca Slicer thing while that's working, and I'll be back. Hey, we are an hour and two minutes in. Sorry about that. Let me get that out of there. We are one hour and two minutes into this print. And I have to admit, it is looking pretty good. Not seeing any issues with it. So we'll be back when it's done. So I thought while I'm waiting for that print to finish, you could probably hear it in the background, I would do a quick screen grab. Oh, sorry, my dog just came in, heard me start to talk. And... I went to, and let me get it over here for you, I went to, um, where was it? I went over to printables, and I got this. This is the enclosure that FlashForge has released for um, the A5M. And looks like it's got some measurements for the panels here, in case you want to cut your own side panels. And um, so I downloaded that. And out of that, I got a single file, a zip file, of course. And when I opened it, the zip file, I got, let me drag it over to the screen that you're looking at. Now, this has all the, all the files in it in step format, which is nice. All the files in it in STL format, which is also nice. And here is a PDF with some instructions. And it's not really instructions, it's more just um, the list of all the different parts, and you can see that over on the printables page. But here it contained this interesting this interesting 3MF file, and it says, and you see it's got the Chidu box icon on it, it says 85M enclosure project open with Orca Slicer 190 and print with 85M. So when I opened that up in Orca Slicer, I got, let me drag it over so you can see it, I got this. Now this, this opens up nine plates. The ones in green are set to print in PLA, and unfortunately they've got Chinese names on it. I mean, there's no way out of that sometimes. I mean, I'm going to forgive them since... 
how much how how I like the fact that they just did this. So I'm going to forgive them that. The ones in this whatever color you want to call that, light purple, magenta, what the heck ever. Um they're the parts they want printed in PETG and the settings are all in there for it. And when I click on one of the green ones and the green color flash port forge generic PE PLA, I'm screwing it all up here, but nonetheless I'm thinking that I can just send these one at a time. So this part is done. It took three hours. I don't know if you can see it. Three hours and one minute. Not sure why it moved it back up to the top like that, but that's okay. Get it off of there. It popped right off for me. And um, get the camera back a bit. And that turned out super nice. I mean, I just don't have any complaints. Wow. That really did turn out nice. I don't have any complaints about that at all. That's going to go right over to my desk and get put to use. Now, let's go back to Orca Slicer for a second. Okay, of these nine plates, I'm going to print plate number one. That is this one here. And I'm just going to accept the standard. It should be set to PETG, and it is. I'm just going to accept the standard, and we are going to go with it. I don't know what else it's set. I would like to change it to 0.28, but um, I think it said, let's, let's slice it. And let's see what it says. Slice plate, and let's see how long it says it's going to take. It is quarter after one now. I would like to finish this before my bedtime. Eight and a half hours. So about 10 p.m. tonight. All right, I'll take that. We are one hour and seven minutes in, and this is where we are at. Okay, that is done. It looked like it turned out really nice. Let's um, let's get it out of there. The light out of the way. right loose looks like they put something intentionally put some little bridges across it to keep it together gonna have to clean the um The support, it looks like the support's going to pull right off. Look at that, huh? And there are holes. I don't know. It's about 8.30 at night. How long did that take? Let me set these aside. I may start the others and just run them all night. This thing seems pretty darn reliable. So um, how long did that take? Complete took 7 hours and 15 minutes. And it said it was going to be eight, what, eight and a half or something like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the others, let, let them run all night long. I'm up and down during the night anyway. Okay, I got plate two started, and um, that'll run for the next, well, if it prints as fast as the other one did, it'll run for the next six and a half hours, and then tomorrow on day three, I'll have those done, and maybe we'll do the filament guide, we'll do some of the PLA parts maybe.